Okay, look, it's close to Halloween, so don't blame me when things get a little weird in videos. But either way, in today's video, I am going to build my new server rack mount cabinet thing. Whether you're protecting yourself on public Wi-Fi, bypassing regional filters, or just simply wanting to download something without the worries of a government or a corporation not liking you for it, a VPN service is a must-have solution. And depending on where you're located, it could be hard to find a VPN fast enough for daily use. That's why the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee of NordVPN is so valuable. Because even though I can tell you I get great speeds and reliability, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. By visiting nordvpn.com slash byte or clicking the link in the video description below, you can test these speeds out for yourself with a heavy discount. And with 30 days to prove it's worth, it's a safe way to ensure you're getting what you paid for. I got this new cabinet because the other one that I have is technically not a server cabinet. It's, it's more of a comms rack, so um, you know, that doesn't really hold servers that well. And since I'm building Loki and it's 31 inches and it requires a much deeper mounting thing, I ended up just getting a new one. So ordered this from Amazon and uh, cost about 200 and I think $50, give or take some change. And I wanted it half height this time because I don't really use full height and you know, I'm not gonna miss that extra space. So if I can make it smaller and look cleaner, hey, that's good. Okay, table of contents. Looks like we have some casters. These are going to allow it to roll around. So that's good. Some nuts, some bolts, nuts, bolts. This looks like rack mounting stuff. This looks like the legs, so you put them on underneath it and then you, you screw them down to stabilize the rack. This, this looks like some kind of like a ground connection, possibly or something to do with RGB. Just kidding. And then these are uh, cable management things that actually hook onto the back of it to help you, well, manage your cables. And then it comes with the socket that you need to put it together and a screwdriver. So it looks like everything is here that I would need to get everything built. I think, I think I'm gonna follow directions. I, re I really need to follow directions on this one. See if I can do this correctly the first time. And through the magic of speeding up a video, cue the build. Okay, it looks like one, this thing right here is bent. So before I put this together, I need to go straighten it out. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be holding the camera, but get the idea, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit it, maybe use something else to shield it from, and then just straighten it out like that. Simple. Voila. More or less, back to being brand new.
Okay, so far everything is looking pretty good. The only thing that I seem to have left is installing the cable management stuff. So basically, got these little hooks that I can put on in different areas. And uh, that should do it. I just gotta stand this thing up, so. And it is extremely light. I mean, it feels solid, but it is extremely light. So I kind of like that. It's really nice. I'm kind of like, on one end, I want to wait to install all these cable management things because, like, I want to know, I don't know exactly where I'm going to install servers or, or where I'm going to have the UPSs or where I'm really going to need this cable management stuff. But I can install one just to get it. So this thing just installs by using one little uh, screw in the back and I could probably just include it on each one but I'm not sure if I'm going to have all of these being used or not so I'm probably just going to hold off for right now getting these installed. One thing I did notice though is that the numbers up here are upside down so oops I guess it's not really that big a deal it's not changing the way anything works or anything it's just more of a OCD thing but if I wanted to I could just take out these four screws and flip it around if I wanted to get them you know upside down or right side up or whatever so it's not really that big of a deal and that is all she wrote I got everything finished up I like what I see so far I can tell this thing is pretty sturdy uh, but I definitely am definitely in love with this whole 25U thing. The rack that I actually have right now, which again is a comms rack or a network rack, and it's not really meant for real servers, whereas this one is a legit rack. The first one I have is super tall, so I don't really need all, all that 48U or 42U space that comes with the rack that I have now. Instead, I wanted something that's a little bit more compact that I can make better use of the space and make it look clean. I do plan on putting a shelf or something on the top here because I want to put like a monitor and a keyboard and some other stuff. Uh, so I do have to make some sort of a flat surface for the top. I did actually order a shelf that I will be using somewhere on this rack. I don't know where, uh, but this one, this one did come with the little bent uh, side here. So just like something else that I had to go into the garage and kind of pound it to make it flat again, I will have to make this flat again. But still, I am overall very happy with the quality of this build. Uh, I do. I am thinking that I'm probably going to take this off and flip it and get the numbers correct. That way they're not upside down. But uh, that's more of just like a, a minor OCD thing and not really anything that's important because it's not changing the way it functions at all. It's just more of, you know, I put them in wrong and I'm kind of wanting to fix it later. But this is part one. Part two is going to be me switching or changing everything from the old rack and putting it in the new one. So stay tuned for that. I'm definitely not going to tackle that tonight just because that is by itself its own endeavor that's going to take a while to break everything down, move it over to this. And yeah, I mean, that's just a task all by itself. One thing I do hope is that I hope that I didn't make this thing too deep. I made this according to the paper from what I used, I made it 31 inches deep for the mounting depth. So I know that Loki, the new server, has a mounting depth of 29 inches, but it can expand from there. So I know, you know that it should at least be able to do the Loki depth. The only thing that I really hope is that the other stuff that I have in my rack is capable of going 31 inches. Uh, I can still lower this down two inches, which is totally okay, and I'm sure I can get everything to fit, but I'll have to figure all that out in part two of this whole thing that I'm doing. Of course, I will link to this rack in the description down below via an Amazon affiliate link. So if you're curious about exactly how much this costs right now, check out the links in the description down below. But I am excited to get everything moved over and actually have a real rack, like a real rack, not just a little comms rack. I know it's shorter, but it's gonna be better. Just you wait. And yes, I'm, I'm probably gonna RGB this thing so, you know, just, just be prepared for that. I know I'm going to RGB this thing, so just be ready. Well guys, that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.
Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna do that. Ow. Whew. Holy bananas, that sucks. Ow. Mask on. Oh, 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 oh. 